Okay, so in this piano lesson today, we are going to look at some concepts and approaches you can take when you play a dominant seven chord. So through the course of the lesson, we're going to look at six different ideas that are mainly scales and arpeggios. Before we get into the, what the right hand does, we want to actually just look at the dominant seven chord first. Let's look at what a dominant seven chord functions like in this progression. So the idea of when we're doing our 2-5. If I finish the piece right there, it would sound unresolved, wouldn't it? Because that sound there actually creates a lot of tension because our listener wants to hear that next chord. So once you kind of understand that that dominant 7 is usually leading to a chord, usually 5 notes below it, so it's usually the 5 chord, 5 to 1. Once you understand that that's that tension, and then the chord it goes to is the release, you'll understand how we can make that sound more tense with the scales that I'm about to show you. When we've got a dominant 7 chord, in this case C7, we can add extensions. So we can do our extensions diatonically, which means it's from the scale it's from. In this case, C mixolydian, or F major if you prefer. So that's an example of making some diatonic extensions. Because we want to create a tense sound, so it gets resolved for the next chord, we can actually add some chromatic extensions. There's our central C7 there, and instead of a fifth, we can do a flat five, or we can do a sharp five, or we can do a nine, a flat nine, or a sharp nine. They're the only chromatic extensions available to us when we're dealing with 7th chords. So those again, flat 5, sharp 5, flat, flat 9, and sharp 9. And it's the same whatever key you're in, so F7, flat 5, sharp 5, flat 9, sharp 9. Adding these chromatic extensions creates a tenser sound. So when the resolution comes, it's got more of an impact there. Hear that crunch into pleasantness. So anytime you see the chord altered, all that altered chord means is that we're doing your dominant 7 chord and we're going to add whatever chromatic extensions you see fit in that moment. Because really, it doesn't really matter if it's a flat 9 or sharp 9 or flat 5, sharp 5, because all of those notes are creating the effect of tension so it can then be resolved. Now you understand why we alter these dominant 7 chords, let's dive in and look at some scale approaches we can use. So first of all, let's stay in the scale. If we're doing a 2-5-1 in F major, we're going to basically use the F major parent scale over all of that, including the, the C7 chord. So if we go G to G, but on the F major scale, we've actually got G Dorian here. And then when we get to the C7, basically a C major with a flat 7 or you can think of it as F major starting on the C and then we end on the F major chord. That scale there is called the C mixolydian That's just a good scale if you don't want to get that altered crunchy sound, if you want to sound, make it sound a little bit more uh, pleasant and in the scales. Okay, let's start looking at some ways to make the scale sound a bit more tense so we're creating more tension for the chord it eventually resolves on. So we're going to look at the whole tone scale. This is a nice easy one because whole tone scale just means you go tone, 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 tone. 
and it's got quite a pattern to it. Three black notes, three white notes, three black notes, three white notes, in that case. And there's only two whole tone scales, because the only other whole tone scale there is, is the one starting on the note below it. So nice, easy one to get under your fingers. So just make sure when you're practicing, you're just tucking your thumb under there. Now the other cool thing about the whole tone scale is when you think about it in arpeggios, you've got these augmented triads. So that's like a C augmented, D augmented, E augmented, F sharp augmented, A flat augmented, B flat augmented. So sometimes I like to think in terms of um, those arpeggio shapes. Okay, so now I'll show you in context in a 2-5-1 in F major. Notice I'm still resolving it nicely. to keep going with that scale then but then I just slipped into the resolution there which is kind of cool okay that's the whole tone scale that's one of the approaches you can take the next uh, easiest approach we can look at is the harmonic minor scale now the harmonic minor scale we don't start it on the C in this case we're starting it on the uh, F harmonic minor which looks like this In this case, because it's on the C chord, we're starting on on the C note, but playing the same notes as that F harmonic minor scale. So what's cool about this one is we get a flat nine, which creates tension. We've got our third as normal, fourth as normal, fifth as normal, and then we've got a sharp five here and then the seventh. So we've got two of the um, chromatic ultra altered notes within the scale. I actually prefer to use this one over a minor 251, mainly because it's actually outlining as if it was in F minor, because it's outlining that, that note there. So let's do my 251 in D minor. And in this case, I'm thinking D harmonic minor because it's five down from the A. So all white notes until we get to those black notes up there. But I'm going to start it on the A. So there is my third approach to the V chord. Now we've got uh, a really interesting scale and this scale here gives you all the chromatic alterations and it is called the altered scale. Let's look at it in C first. So just remembering that our C7 essentially has root, third and seventh. And instead of going up a normal mixolydian, we're altering every note. So we've got a flat nine, sharp nine, third, flat five, sharp five, seventh, and then we're at the end. Now the parent scale of this one is actually D flat jazz melodic minor. And all it really is, is you've got a major scale, but a jazz melodic minor means you just flatten the third and keep all the other notes the same. In this case, we're starting C to C which gives us that really tense sound. So in a 2 5 one in F. Okay, so that was the altered scale. 
Okay, the fourth one we're going to look at is called the half whole step scale. It can also be called the octatonic scale, um, but that's a little bit more of a classical term. Half whole is exactly how it sounds. Half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step. So it's just altering those. And really all that's giving you is three of the chromatic extensions, but we're just not having the, um, the sharp five in the scale. So again, let's look at it in a 2-5-1 in F. Now, you'll find out later that these work well over diminished 7th chords too. So if I've got a diminished 7 chord here, the half whole step kind of slips into each of the notes of that diminished 7th chord. Okay, now they're all my scale approaches, and I'm going to show you one more approach that you can take to it, and that is using arpeggios. So the very first arpeggio I might look at it was what I mentioned in the, in the whole tone scale, is these ideas of these augmented triads. And you can don't have to go just up and down like that. You can... You can... Play it in any sort of sequence you like. You could even alter it in this case with other um, other augmented triads. That's one shape we can use. Now another shape we can use is the diminished seven triad, and I really like this one. So. What you do is you get the root of whatever the seventh chord is, in this case C7, and you go up a semitone, and then you build a diminished seven chord off that. And what it gives you is all the notes from C7, the third and seventh, but it also gives you the flat nine. It works a lot better over the minor two five one, I think. What I like about it is wherever you land, it's easy to resolve on the, the next note of the chord. Yeah, so it's a really, really cool shape to get down. Then we can look at some kind of uh, upper structure things and what that what I'm talking about there and I'll do a whole new video on this one at some stage but there's a whole lot of um, triads that you can play over the top of a C7 chord to get this sort of clashy sound. So there them in a nutshell. There's a couple of minor ones that I like to use too. There's this one, which is the um, the semitone above. So let's just look at just using a C sharp minor in two five one in C. And I'll do it in the minor two five one two, and I'm going to use. semitone above that A. So there's one. I won't do all of the upper structure shapes, but just to show you, um, one of the other ones we can use is use going off a major triad, which is a tone above the root, which is this nice sh sharp 11, 13 sound. So if I'm in 2, 5, 1 in F, that one that well, I don't think. I'll try. Okay, let's do one more. Uh, let's look at A major 
over the C7. That gives us a 13, a flat 9, and we've got the third of the chord. So thinking in that A major triad when we get to the C. So that's kind of a, a cool one as well. Okay, so there were my six approaches to how we can play some melody ideas over the five chord. So I'll go over all six of them again. So starting with our Mixolydian. So it's all just that parent scale of F major. And that's a nice one because it doesn't sort of clash too much. The next one was the whole tone scale. So we have... tone scale now the harmonic minor remembering that we're going we're thinking about it as the fifth down from whatever the seventh chord is so in this case F harmonic minor but I'm going to play it C to C and here it is in context I prefer that one over the minor 251 actually, so let's do it there. Cool. The next one we covered was the altered scale, so just remembering that in C. We've got our C7 and it's basically all the chromatic extensions in there. Or you can think of it as D flat jazz minor, but starting C to C. Uh, so in context. Next one we have was the half whole step, and this is a great one for those diminished triads if you ever come across those as well. So basically all the alterations apart from that, that five. In context. And then the next thing we were talking about was using arpeggios. So I'll do a minor triad off the flat two of the chord, which is that shape. I hope you got a lot out of that one and I hope it helps you jazz up your playing, particularly with the 251s. How would you practice it? I would actually be looking at, you know, one concept at a time and running it through your 251s and making sure that, that you're really comfortable with whatever the concept is over the 251s and then I'd start kind of adapting it to your repertoire. There's some things for you to try. I hope you enjoy those ones. Uh, if you know anyone who might benefit from this, please share it around. But otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for your support of this channel.